This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. Today I'll be making the Curry of Life from Naruto. In the show, this curry has a spice level so high that it can immediately wake up an unconscious person when fed a single spoonful. So as you can tell by this bowl of dried chilies in front of me, this is gonna be a spicy one. For the curry recipe itself, I'm starting with a Japanese style curry, beginning with onion, ginger, and garlic. I'm just peeling and slicing one large onion into normal size chunks. For the garlic, I'm chopping up two cloves, and for the ginger, I'm using about a one inch knob, removing the skin with my knife and grating it until everything has been broken down. For the other vegetables, I have three carrots and one potato. I'm peeling and cutting the carrot into nice jewel sized chunks and providing the same treatment to the potato. For the meat, it's pretty common to use beef in these kinds of situations. And the cut of beef used for this curry is chuck, which has some connective tissue and fat that'll break down quite nicely in the braise. Once it's been untied, the chuck gets cut into large chunks. These end up shrinking quite a bit during the cook, so I like to have them a little larger. Alright, everybody's all happy to the stove. In a large Dutch oven over high heat, I'm browning the beef in a little bit of cooking oil. That gets followed up by a healthy pinch of salt and a heavy dose of freshly cracked black pepper. Once that's looking pretty good, the beef exits the pan into a bowl to rest for later. And after all the remaining juices have reduced down, in go the onion. The onions hang out and stir in the pot until they started to sweat a little bit. Then the garlic and ginger joins the party. If they came to the party a little too soon, they probably would have burned, so it's good that they have the onions to help give them protection. For some spice, color, and flavor, I'm adding in one tablespoon of togarashi, along with one tablespoon of tomato paste. Even though you may not find these in a lot of Japanese curries, Lady Sancho from the show does see seem to add a lot of things into this curry of life, and the flavors do seem to make sense with everything else. Once everything's been stirred and takes on a nice beautiful red color, I'm going to deglaze with one whole cup of red wine. This will help get all the flavor bits that might be stuck to the bottom or the sides, but also make the curry a little bit darker. We are trying to go for a dark black after all. At this point in time, the beef has decided to rejoin this party, along with roughly 8 cups of beef stock. Everybody in the pot seems to be having a good time, so we're going to let them hang out and cook over low heat with the lid half open. I'll let you guys simmer away for about an hour or so. While the curry party happens over there, I'm going to make one of its best friends, rice. Pretty straightforward, rice cooker, 3 cups of white rice, which I'm going to first wash to remove any excess starch that would cause the grains to clump together if not washed out. Let's press the button and let this rice cook, because I have other things to attend to. A rather spicy encounter. I have here an entire bowl of dried red chilies. I believe these are from the Szechuan origin, and being Chinese myself, I'm quite familiar with these and how terrible they are when they hit your tongue. I do want to make sure I remove the stems first, because those would definitely not be pleasant to eat. As if the other parts are. As I am going through these stems, I am contemplating how much to actually use, and I decided to not kill everybody in the room, because this is the curry of life, not the curry of death. I will settle with half a bowl of dried Szechuan chilies. Fun fact, a single one of these usually makes me sweat. This is going to be rather interesting. Now, over a high flame, foreshadowing, I'm going to toast these topless chilies in a dry pan until smoky and dark. This not only removes the moisture, but also wakes up the chilies' aromatic and spicy flavors. Just like how this curry is supposed to wake up an almost dead person. Let's check back on this curry party, shall we? Hmm, this party seems to have reduced in size, so it's time to add in a few more guests, the potatoes and the carrots. These usually come last to the party because if they go a little too early, they would have a breakdown. The water level seems a little too low, so I am topping it off with a bit of extra beef stock. But even though everybody's in there having a good time, the party can't really start until the guest of honor is here. The curry, which in this recipe will take on the form of a curry roux block, often come in packages sold at Asian supermarkets. 
made sure I got the spiciest one out there. It says extra hot right there on the box. For the amount of food we have in the pot, I'm using half of the package or four of these little blocks broken down. One way that I found useful is to put this in a giant ladle, lower it into the liquid, and slowly mix it around to let the liquid absorb into the roux before mixing with the rest of the pot. But once it's all out of the spoon, give it a good old mix and it's pretty much ready to go. And you could totally stop at this point for a typical normal Japanese style curry. It would be pretty delicious with some rice, but we're not doing normal today. This is the curry of life. Remember all those toasted chili from before? Well, these are going to go into a food processor and processed until they become a very fine powder. If you don't have any sensitive people in the room, make sure to uncover the lid and blow out all of the chili aromas into the room to make them sneeze and cough. Can't really tell, but Steve, Nico, and Kendall are now feeling the effects of this chili wave that I have graciously bestowed upon them. This world will know pain. The curry party seems to be going pretty good. I'm just gonna top this off with another splash of beef stock because the water seems to be a little low. Giving it a stir to make sure that no bits are burnt on the bottom. And to really achieve that super dark black color, I'm using a whole entire packet of black bean paste, also found at most Asian grocery supermarkets. This paste is often made with fermented wheat flour and soybeans. And the flavor does seem to go well with the rest of the ingredients. This is often used in a lot of types of Asian cuisine. I've personally seen my mom use this in a Chinese dish called jajangmian. And Korean cooks use this in a dish called jajangmyeon. Same same, but different. In preparation for the amount of spice we're gonna bombard this thing with, I'm adding a pretty healthy glug of honey. Sweetness does seem to help ease the spiciness sometimes, so I will actually add three healthy glugs of honey before giving it a stir and reluctantly but willingly adding in all of the toasted and blended chili powder from our food processor. Oh boy. Mmm. Delicious, look at all those chili seeds just swarming to the surface. Now I could have added all sorts of different peppers, ghost pepper, scotch bonnet, but I did actually want this end product to be delicious. And those peppers flavors might have actually killed it. At this point, this curry is very dark, but it isn't pitch black. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm gonna cheat a little bit with a little splash of black gel food coloring. I could have probably added something really dark like squid ink or even more of that bean paste, but I did want this to be edible and pretty delicious because Rock Lee in the show does seem to really love the flavors. After another five minutes, there seems to be a blackout at this party. This looks like a pot of death. Delicious. Our midnight black curry is done, our rice is done, so the last thing to do is to plate up and serve. Onto a dinner plate goes a massive heaping of white rice. The ninjas in Naruto are soldiers and should be fed as such. Onto our heaping pile of rice goes a heaping ladle full of our jet black curry of life. Hey, this looks kind of cool. Almost like a yin yang sign with too much of the one and not much of the other. I forgot which is which, but I present to you our version of the curry of life from Naruto. Known to be so spicy and strong that it can wake up an unconscious ninja with one single bite. I am awake, but I will take a big bite nevertheless. Here we go. No turning back now. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> oh. Uh oh. What you see here is a look of instant regret, contemplation of the meaning of life itself and all of the choices I have made in my last years. Sweet baby Jesus. The flavor is actually quite nice. It's like you're eating a really delicious Japanese curry and someone decides to break into your house with the flamethrower and he won't stop flaming even though you tell him to. And as time goes on, the flamethrower turns into jet fuel. Here is some milk that Kendall has graciously provided me. I'm good now. Oh look, Nico has fallen unconscious on the battlefield. Whatever will wake him up, maybe a spoonful of this curry of life. Let's see what happens. Oh, and he's up and ready for battle after being knocked out by Andrew in a fist fight. Hey, it's Kendall. Kendall, uh, Kendall seems to love what is happening right now. I really think curry is her favorite food. How about Steve? Steve, what do you think? Steve is shaking or nodding his head, and I is twitching. I'm not sure what is going on, but nah, he's good. He's, he, yeah, he was playing with us the whole time. Were you silly goose? Oh, Andrew, Andrew, what do you think about this curry of life? Okay, he's inhaling, he's exhaling. The hat has now left the building. Uh, yep, I think he likes it. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 